just uh, ask if anyone wants to comment on the 100 questions that were posted or has uh, reflections on those, disagrees violently with anything <laughs> that's written there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe there's something in the Zoom or... Maybe you can, when you uh, 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 comment on question, if you could tell us a number, I can just open there. You want to go ahead with uh, the Zoom question? Yeah. Yes, so the question is, do we lose all aspect of unitarity in a UV-complete theory of bulk quantum gravity? Sorry, which number? We can't, we can't, oh, no, is not, she working? Uh, this is a Zoom question. Oh, this is a new question. Oh, the plan was to the plan talk was about to the old first questions and not to add more questions. On questions. <laughs> Otherwise, then... Uh, we can first start with the audience. Yeah, and if there's any... Uh, is there any comment on the old questions, like when will we <laughs> all become obsolete by AI and so on? Yeah, you want to... Oh, Marcos, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to make a comment on the question of Ashok. Uh, uh, Ashok, which... Yeah, you know, I think uh, Ashok. you mentioned it in your... In yeah, your yeah, 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 yeah. Let me uh, go over there. Uh, here. Yeah. Can you so, see? So, yeah, Ashok proposes to, to look at saddle points to, in order to reconstruct the full non perturbative uh, object in string theory. But I, I would really, really like to e e emphasize that there are many sources of non perturbative effects in quantum field theory, for example, which do not really come from saddle points. For example, mm -hmm. in QCD, the main correction to many observables is known to be due, uh, is, is, is expected to be due to what are called condensates of operators, like gluon condensates or quarvilinear condensates, and these do not really have a saddle point description. And more generally, I have the impression that in the string theory community, perhaps because of the reliance on, on, on supersymmetric quantum field theory, we, we give a lot of importance to saddles as sources of, of non productive effects, and we have not really uh, thought uh, seriously about the analogs of these uh, vacuum condenses, for example, in asymptotically mm -hmm. free theories, which really play a fundamental role in quantum field theory. Yeah, I think that's a very, very fair comment. Uh, I think in the context of string theory, we, we don't have a, right now a tool to e explore these uh, 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 non perturbative effects that are not of this type, I'm afraid. If there are any ideas, uh, I think it would be very interesting to find out. Well, I would like to turn it around to a question for Marcos, um, which, and I was wondering during your talk, um, you made the statement that we could, we can, uh, using resurgence, it's a very complicated problem, but in principle, using resurgence in the perturbation theory, um, we can reconstruct the theory. But of course, we know um, of theories with non perturbative parameters, theta parameters being the most. Um, most familiar of them. And we, a priori, there could be non perturbative functions, or there could be all kinds of stuff. And so, how, what does it, and I, maybe the same thing would apply to Ashok. Why do we think that um, taking st string field theory, which may or may not be the fundamental definition of string theory, or resurgence? Why do we, why are we confident that this will give us what we want? Yeah, I mean, it's a very non-trivial proposal that you can reconstruct objects by using, say, a combination of perturbation theory and then non perturbative corrections. And I think that the best thing we can do is to really look at things that we, for which we know some non perturbative definition, which in quantum field theory we have many sources. For example, large chain methods give us sometimes non perturbative definitions of objects, and then there you can really verify or not if this non perturbative information can be decoded into a, a collection of perturbative series and non perturbative corrections. And I don't know any counterexample to this expectation. So that's that's if you want a confidence by example. So in the examples where we know what we are doing, we really seem to be able to reconstruct things in this way. And also, of course, you know, what is a non-trivial statement that we don't realize is that the fact that perturbative, uh, perturbation theory gives us the right asymptotic expansion for a non-perturbative object, I think it's already pointed out that, you know, if... Uh, we should be able to complement perturbation theory, but something of the same character. Otherwise, why we are able to do asymptotic expansions in the first, in the first, uh, uh, in the first case, right? So, so I think uh, uh, 
by mathematical reasons and also by explicit examples, we, we, I have some confidence that the program is realistic. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the other, the, the other question you can ask is why we want to, why we want to do this or you know, why, don't we want, <laughs> why don't we do lattice or bootstrap directly, right? That's another type of question. Yeah, I think it would be good to have some kind of test when you have a non partality proposal. Uh, it would be good to have a test because it's consistent. That's why in my... In my remarks, I proposed matching with black hole entropy as a one kind of test of non-perturbative -compa non completion of topological string, for example. Alex? Yeah, so I wanted to make a comment about the question raised by Eric Perlmutter, 64. Perlmutter. Yeah, that you, you brought up in your talk, Hiroshi. Yeah, here. Yeah, so about the distribution of CFTs in the central charge space. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess these, are, these results are not out yet, but hopefully soon. But for 2D CFTs, we can upper bound the density of CFTs in, in central charge by something that's doubly exponentially small in the central charge. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, this is based on work with Alex Maloney and Florian Seifeld. And I don't know what the interpretation of that is, but it seems, uh, it seems like a very, very dense... Uh, right, set. yeah, clearly there seems to be some very interesting structure about... Uh, uh, space of uh, a, a discrete family of conformal field series, and uh, I think it will be very interesting areas to explore. Other questions or comments? About 100 questions. There was one question was uh, whether we should be worried that the uh, founding generation of string theories is going, that was by Yuji Tajikawa, is going to uh, not be around for an infinite amount of time, and whether we should chain la train large language models on the best paper so that we sort of keep the memory alive. I don't know what you think <laughs> of that. <laughs> Daniel. Okay, I, I have a comment on that, less on the, on the morbid part of it. Um, uh, you know, this is a maybe slightly awkward thing to say, but I feel in some sense we've been too much under the influence of the founding members of the field. They're very powerful members of our community in deciding what happens, you know, scientifically in our careers. And, you know, some of that is necessary by the virtue of the academic enterprise. But, God, I hope we don't train a large language model and keep listening to the same <laughs> thing. You know, I think it's better. We need to explore ourselves and be, be brave. I would totally agree to Daniel. And let me... And let me propose a, an alternate question. How should we celebrate when they get out of our hair? <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Are there comments from the, uh, from the Zoom? Well, these were, there were a few comments on the Zoom, but they were kind of related to the, the sitter discussion, I think mostly to the, the six questions that Andy showed. I think there are sort and of had a question. questions that pertain to those questions. They're not really comments as much as additional questions. Is it that possible to display the Zoom chat on the screen? Because it's kind of hard to decipher what's being said. If it's not possible, don't bother. Yeah, please, please, please read out. Read. Yeah. Okay, so one, one question is, uh, for example, whether um, the analytic continuation is sufficient for uh, tracking the sitter. In uh, general, I presume it would be better, this is what I'm reading, it would be better for a more uh, canonical derivation of things in the sitter holography, such as why um, infotheoretic things should be uh, what they are in the sitter CFT? It could, it could be. Um, I, obviously, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think anybody knows. And um, so um, I, I think maybe the best advice there was just given by Daniel. To ignore everything that's that's been been said and um, figured out, yeah, it's a, it's a wide open question. What what the best way to um, think about it? 
Yes, and then the other question is, um, do we lose all aspect of unitarity in a UV-complete theory of bulk quantum gravity? Large volume limit of the wheeler de Witter equation tell us that there is an ocean, an ocean of unitarity, uh, of, of an holographic duality. However... Yeah. Ah, okay. However, okay. Do we lose all aspect of unitarity in a UV-complete theory of bulk uh, quantum gravity? Large volume uh, limits of the wheeler de Witter equation tell us that there is an ocean of uh, a holographic duality. However, these look naively non-unitarity in a sense that they do not have a positive norm. But are, uh, but are we sure that we lose uh, purity of state and the bulk unitarity time evolution? Are we sure that we lose it or are we sure that we don't lose it? Yes, with, uh, are we sure that we lose purity of this? That's the question. Well, it was, it was my understanding that uh, m most people think we don't lose purity. I think it was supposed to be in the large N limit, wasn't it? The question? From what I heard, maybe I didn't hear. Uh, wait, well, yeah, it was not very clear in which context of quantum gravity the question was being uh, asked. The question was supposed to be in the context of the sitter. Oh, in the sitter. In the sitter. Oh, okay. Well, I think it's an open question. Um, I, 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 I mean, I myself recently uh, wrote a paper in which I put forward the hypothesis that it's an isometry, but not unitarity. Um, and I, I don't think everybody has agreed with that that's the obvious correct uh, solution, but it, there, um, some people are su suggesting that. And as I said in the beginning, it, it is very hard to reconcile the um, existence of a Big Bang with um, a, a, a nothing followed by something with uh, the idea of unitary time evolution. And more generally, it's hard to reconcile something that's come out of string theory that there is at most uh, one degree of freedom in the bulk per, uh, per string scale or per Planck scale um, and uh, unitary evolution in an expanding universe. So I think it, I think that's a, an example of a question that we obviously closely related to the information paradox because the universe, you know, the space-time is expanding right outside the horizon of the black hole and contracting inside. And uh, Chris Akers uh, gave us a beautiful talk about concepts which are obviously relevant to this question, though I... I don't think he answered it fully, and he didn't say the words uh, cosmology, but uh, there are a lot of interesting things to think about there. Juan? You, you feel that it does or it doesn't? Well, in consider space, you could have space-like surfaces that go up to future null infinity and move forward in time. That's what... Well, evolution is not generated by unitary operator. I think this was the question from David from 10 years ago. I, if I remember reading through those of 10 years ago, it was yeah. like if space is emergent, then time is also emergent. And if time is also emergent, uh, yeah, what does that mean? And if, if time is emergent, what does unitarity mean? So that's, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's getting pretty late. Uh, the organizers look a bit exhausted. They probably want to have a beer to celebrate a successful Good idea. <laughs> conference. Uh, maybe you should just uh, leave it here, give one final big uh, round of applause. <laughs>